I'm Jeremy with Poindexter G, and today we're going to talk about Mauser slash DWN suing the United States. So what exactly was this case all about? Well, to get into that, we'll have to go back before all of this happened to kind of show you why certain things were happening. Now, as the United States went into the Spanish-American War, they were using the M1898, better known as the Krag Jorgensen. Now, the Krag was the first rifle for the United States that was more than just a single shot. It could hold multiple rounds in it. Now, as we went into the Spanish-American War, which was a war that we did win, we did see something from the other side that we did like. We really liked their Spanish Mauser rifles. Now, the reason that we really liked the Spanish Mausers was because of a big difference between them and the Krag that we were using at the time. The Krag Jorgensen had an unusual loading system where there was a door on the side that you would open up, you'd take a handful of rounds, and you'd just kind of dump them in there. And in theory, they would all slide in and go into their place. But this rarely seemed to work exactly like it was supposed to. You'd get rounds that would go in crooked and hang it all up. You'd get some that would bounce out and go out of there. The Mauser, however, had a very elegant way of getting those rounds into there. Basically a stripper clip. The stripper clip was just a strip of metal that you could slide the rounds into. You could then put that clip into a slot on the rifle, push on the top round, and just slide or strip all of them right into it. It just feeds clean every time. They go in there nice and neatly. So the United States set out to build something that was a lot like the Mauser. And when I say it was a lot like the Mauser, I mean it was a Mauser. There are a bunch of different things on this that make it pretty obvious that it is a Mauser. The stripper clip being one of the biggest things on there but you've also got the flag safety on the back you've got the extractor groove on the side of the bolt you've got the way that the locking lugs are all done in there these are all right out of a mauser action and so mauser sees what they're making and they're like hey dude that's a mauser that you're making there and the united states was like oh is this a mauser well darn it we didn't notice yeah i guess we're uh Gonna have to pay you there. <laughs> and so you're like, huh, this is what that case was over. Well, no, not exactly. Basically, the United States decided that, yeah, this was pretty obviously a Mauser, and they were just gonna have to pay. So they talked to DWM, which was the company that owned Mauser. DWM is Deutsche Waffen Munition Fabric. Yeah, don't ask me to pronounce German. But basically, they came up with a deal with them. They paid them so much per rifle and so much for every thousand stripper clips made with a cap of $200,000. So basically, it was the $200,000 that they paid. Hey, this all went well. It was good. There we go. So where exactly does this whole you know lawsuit thing come in? Well, a little bit later... DWM noticed something else that the United States was using, and that was a Spitzer bullet. Now, Spitzer bullet is basically the pointed bullet that you're familiar with on rifle rounds. Now, in the black powder days, all of the bullets basically were just the rounded off ends, and that was all that would really ever work with black powder. Well, once Smokeless came out a few years after that, somebody realized, hey, if you kind of make them um, pointed at the end instead of round, they actually spin better and you get a lot more speed and better ballistics out of it. And they patented that, and so they had the Spitzer bullet. Well, the United States, for the M1903, which was the rifle that was basically the Mauser that they had made, they had come up with the 3003 cartridge, and this 3003 cartridge had a ball bullet on it. But they decided, hey, you know, Kind of like the look of that Spitzer bullet. Maybe we ought to put one of those in there. And they started using those in 1906, thus the .30-06 cartridge. And DWM sees this. And they go to the United States and they're like, hey, now you're just using the Spitzer bullet, which is ours. I mean, come on, guys. 
and you're like, ah, the Spitzer bullet. Now we're at the point of what this case is about. Well, yes, but actually no. Well, the United States might have actually had a little bit of an argument for it. Um, in the black powder days, they had tried to use what was essentially a Spitzer type bullet, but the black powder didn't give it enough uh, power to get any extra ballistics on it, and they abandoned the project. They planned to argue that since they had done that, that the bullets that they were using were not true Spitzer bullets, but were in fact a continuation of that thing that they had developed on their own. And they might have actually had a good case on that, but we'll never know because something came along to stop the entire thing, and that was World War I. Now, while World War I stopped things, it is very important to the story, or specifically its ending is very important to the story, because that is where we finally get into what this lawsuit was actually all about. And so, while the United States was in Germany, they got over to DWM and saw the stuff about DWN Spitzer patent, and they were like, hey, aren't we currently, like, in a lawsuit to get stopped by the war, you know, with these guys about the Spitzer bullets? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, well, why don't we just take the patent? And so that's what they did. They just took the patent, because you can't sue us about the Spitzer bullet if you don't have the patent to the Spitzer bullet, and if it's ours, it's genius. That's brilliant. It's great. Why didn't we think of this earlier? Well, there's a reason they didn't think of it earlier. You can't do that. I mean, that's like literally an international treaty violation. And so this is what they sued the United States over. And the United States tried to tie it up and keep it from going anywhere. But eventually the judge was just like, yeah. You kind of stole their patents, guys. You can't do that. So the United States ended up having to pay $400,000, which is twice what they had to pay them to get the royalties to the actual Mauser rifle. And this was something that they may have not even actually needed to do anyway because the United States had a very good argument that they may have come up with the Spitzer type bullet design on their own. So the moral of the story is when you're in a lawsuit with a company in a foreign country that you were recently at war with, don't steal their patents. So I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, be sure to like or comment. You can also subscribe to my channel to make sure that you don't miss anything that I post. I'm Jeremy with Poindexter G and we'll see you next time.